Hi, I'm Pastor Ralph, pastor of Timmy Koo Life Center. People like Timmy who? Timmy Koo Life Center. Timmy Koo Life Center is the name that I felt God gave me um, to name our church and to put it out there to so people could understand a little bit about us, our vision. And Timmy Koo means the place where the sun breaks through and shines on the white midst. And that appealed to me because we all have a little fog sometimes in the morning. And so when the sun of God comes in and shines on us, I mean, it opens up things and lifts our mood and our attitude. And so that's why we're called Timmy Koo Life Center. But I have a message for you today. And I am praying that you are ready to receive, turn your receiver on, turn your believer on, and let's get into God's word. What I'm going to be talking about today is understanding the vine and the branch relationship. Understanding the vine and the branch relationship. You may have heard about Jesus being the vine and we being the branches, but we need to have some understanding of what that really means and how we can apply in our lives so we get the understanding, the full understanding of what that relationship really represents. And so I'm going to be reading out of John 15, starting with verse 1 through 11, but I have a few questions that I would like to pose to you just to get your mind moving in the right direction, to think about some things. These questions will open you up. So as I'm reading the scripture, you'll be able to relate to the verses as I share them. And so here are some of the questions that I have for you. How closely connected are you to Jesus? How closely connected? I mean, can we be real close to Jesus? I mean, he's not here any longer. By his spirit, he's here. Uh, we teach that he lives inside of us. But how do we find ourselves closer to Jesus? And one of the ways is to get into the word and get into fellowship with other believers where God's presence is known. But how closely connected, how linked, how much association do you have with Jesus? <laughs> Here's another question. Are you in a fruit bearing relationship with Jesus? I mean, does your relationship bear fruit? When people see you, they see your life. Does it bear the fruit of God? Does it bear the fruit of the spirit in your life? Are you in a fruit bearing relationship or are you barren? You know, and that's just something to think about, you know, because sometimes, you know, you can go through the motions and just do things over and over again, and you can kind of make it more of a religious practice, but not really a relationship. So I just want to know, and I wanted to know for myself, you know, am I and are you in a fruit bearing relationship with Jesus? Here's the next question. How would you define your relationship with Jesus? Are you a guest or are you a resident? I mean, that's a big question to ask. Some people come to church and they're like a visitor and they're like a guest and they read the Bible the same way, like they're a visitor or that they're a guest. But I want to know, and I want you to know, you can be more than a guest. You can take up resident with God. And it's always better to be a person that is a resident than a person that's just passing by or being a guest. And so God would love to have a relationship with you where it's a long-term relationship and he would love for you to feel like you're a part of things. And so you have to answer the question, are you still seeking? Are you a guest or are you a resident? Did you make the commitment at some point in your life to where you were going to reside with the Lord? That's important. Here's another question. Can you trust the pruning process of God in your life? What is pruning? Pruning is when something is cut off or cut back. You know, if something's dead, you cut it off. If something is fruitful, but you want it to be more fruitful, you cut it back so it can become more fruitful. So can you trust that when God starts the pruning process in your life, can you trust that and yield to that so that you can become better, that you can do more, that you can have better fruit? That's something you have to decide to do because God wants you to bear fruit and he wants you to bear fruit that's more consumable. So can you trust that? That's the question. And the last question I have for you is we know that God loves us, but how do we show our love for him? Now, how do we know that God loves us? According to John three sixteen in the scripture, he says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we know God loves us. And we hear that throughout the Bible, the love of God for us. How do you and how do I show my love for God? Well, as I read the scriptures here today, you've got to be able to understand and find out 
These very questions will be answered in this section. So let's listen up. Let's take some notes and ask some questions. If there's something you don't understand, I'm here live on the chat right now. You can ask a question. You can make a comment and we can relate that way. And if it's too long of a question, then you can just send me an email and I'll get right back to you. So let's get right into the word. All right. Here in John 15, John, St. John chapter 15, starting with verse one. And like I said, we'll get down to verse 11. And it says this, Jesus is talking. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. And I like the fact that Jesus makes it aware, makes us aware that he is a vine, but not only a vine, he's the true vine, meaning that there are other vines that are in our life and in our world, but he's the true vine. And so you want to really kind of hone in on that. You just don't want to be around any old vine. I mean, there's weeds, there's all kinds of other things that are not really fruit bearing. Jesus says, I'm the true vine means I am the life. I am the one that brings sustenance and sustainance to your life. So I am the true vine. And he says, my father is the vine dresser. In other words, he sees himself as the vine and God the father as the vine dresser, the one who takes care of the garden. And then he goes on to say in verse two, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, that does not bear fruit, he says he takes it away. Remember I said, can you trust the pruning of God? When God decides to take something away or remove something from your life, can you trust the process? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. It's so important for us to understand that we are here to be productive and to produce and to bear fruit. And when people look at your life, they're not just looking at you. They're looking at God in your life. They're looking at the relationship that you have with God. And the fruit that we have is what talks and speaks of this relationship that we have with God. Now, we shouldn't be fruit inspectors. God is the fruit inspector. I shouldn't be looking at your tree or your life and determining what kind of fruit you have. But God himself is the fruit inspector. And he can look at your life and he can tell whether or not something is budding and burgeoning, he can either cut it off or he can cut it back. And that would be his decision because he knows what's best for us. So it's important that we think about bearing fruit and do what it takes to bear the fruit. All right. Now in verse three, it says this, you are already clean because of the word, which I have spoken to you. So he gives us this kind of confidence that when the word goes forth, it's a cleansing process that God does with us. You know, the more words you get into, this is why I tell people all the time, read the word for at least 15 minutes every day. If you can do it for 15 minutes a day, it will change your life. It will give you the understanding of how God thinks, how God works, how he operates in your life. It's kind of hard to understand what God is doing if we're not reading the scripture. And so it's not a condemnation, it's an observation. And it doesn't take long. I can say we can watch television for hours. We can play games for hours. We can go and have recreational fun for hours. And all of that is good. And I think we should do that. But if we give God 15 minutes in the morning or 15 minutes in the evening and really concentrate on what he just said in verse three, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. So when you hear the word of God, it's like a cleansing. It cleanses us. It bathes us. It makes us ready to stand before God, to stand before life. That's what that's all about. The word prepares you to deal with life as it comes. And that's a powerful thing that you have been equipped to become aware of what's happening, what's coming down the pipeline. Let's take a look at verse four. Jesus says this, he says, abide in me and I in you. And as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, which makes a lot of sense, a branch cannot bear fruit unless it's connected to the vine. So that's what Jesus is relating to. It's going to be hard for us to bear any fruit if we're not connected to him. So we want to find ourselves in relationship with him and we want to become more of a resident than a guest. We don't want to just do a drive-by with God. We want to be come in and live and stay and dwell with him and, and reside with him and learn from him. That's really what this relationship is all about. Once you're in a relationship with God, he never leaves you or forsakes you. Even sometimes we may leave God, we may fall backwards, we may fall down, but God never leaves us. So he says, abide in me and I in you. And as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. 
And you can see the relationship there. He's relating the fact that a branch cannot grow alone apart from the vine. You cannot grow alone spiritually apart from Jesus. And that's love. That's love language. Jesus is actually looking for us to be closer and to grow in us and trust in him. And he'll develop your confidence. He'll give you boldness. He'll help you in your prayer life. I mean, you will learn more about yourself and learn more about the word hanging out with Jesus. You put on the perspective that Jesus has about the world and what he has about the world is that God loves the world. We don't serve a mean, judgmental God. We serve a God that loves people. He loved you so much. That's why Jesus came. That's so important for us to get. In verse five, he says, I am the vine. And he's repetitious here. He keeps talking about over here. I am the true vine. No one can bear fruit unless he's in me. So he says again in five, he says, I am the vine. And you are the branches. He who abides in me takes up resident, who lives, doesn't act like a guest. You know, come on in, you know, take your shoes off, sit a while. Let's dine together. Let's sup together. Let's let's conversate and communicate together. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him. Now, this is a new kind of point in the relationship. If you abide in God, if you abide in Jesus, he also abides in you. So the relationship goes two ways. So as we come into God, he comes into us. That's so important. So you're not alone. You're not doing this by yourself. So I am the vine again, and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. That's so important. So when we try to live as Christians outside of God, and try to do our own thing. What God is saying is that apart from me, by you not abiding in me, by you not reading and studying and praying, it's gonna be difficult for you to bear fruit. And so he's given us some awareness here. He's trying to let us know what it's gonna take for us to be productive. And all of us wanna be productive. We all wanna bear fruit because when you bear fruit, it identifies who you are and it identifies whose you are. I have a lemon tree in my backyard. The only way that I know that that's a lemon tree is not by the leaves, but by the fruit that's on it. Because sometimes leaves look the same on all trees. But when I look out there and I see lemons on that tree, I go, oh, that's a lemon tree. And when people look at your life, they should see the fruit of God on your life. They should see love and they should see gentleness and meekness and humility. These are things that really speak of God in your life. You know, and so important that we stay close to him. In verse six, it says this, if anyone does not abide in me, so if you choose not to abide, in other words, when I say abide, you choose not to read or you choose not to pray or you choose not to fellowship, whatever that is that you choose not to do concerning your relationship with God, this is what he's addressing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch. Now, remember the metaphor is about a tree. So it's not about you being thrown away, but it's about the things in your life, the behavior, uh, the habits that you have, those things that are not productive for your life and for the kingdom, those things will be cut off and thrown away. So listen again in verse six, he says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up and they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. So the, me- the metaphor is that when a gardener is looking at a tree and the tree has some green branches, It has some leaves and some fruit. And then there's branches within that that are dead, brown and brittle. What he's saying is those branches he'll clip off because they're taking up room uh, for the fruit of the other live branches. So he snips them off kind of like, you know, you get a haircut, you get your ends trimmed or you get your haircut just to trim it up. That's what he's doing. He's trimming things up to make things more useful. He's, he's trimming things up in your life to make you more productive. So I want you to see this as God doing something for you so that he can do something through you. That's so important. If God does something for you, he'll be able to do something through you. And rather than us taking the approach that God's doing things to me, a lot of people, and I had this for a long time, that I thought that God was keeping things from me, that God was doing this for me. He wasn't allowing me to have this and have that. And more or less, it was me. It was my unworthiness and my low self-esteem, and I didn't have anywhere else to point the finger but God, because I surely wasn't pointing it at myself. But you know what? We need to learn to point the finger at ourselves first. Take personal responsibility. If things are not happening for you and not happening through you, 
It might be because your mindset is about God doing something to you. And I'm here to tell you today, he's not. He's given us understanding so we don't have to think that way. So it goes on to verse seven. This is very powerful in verse seven. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. Now that is based on a relationship of abiding and taking up residence in Christ. This is not a prayer you can pray to get whatever you want when you want it. It's a prayer that respects the boundaries of relationship. As you relate to God, he relates to you. As you learn his ways and he's teaching you better ways to live, when you begin to pray, you start aligning your prayer in line with the desire of God and what's right for you and what's good for you and what's good for all those around you. And so it's very powerful. So if you abide in me, if you spend the time with God that you should, and his words abide in you, Ask whatever you wish or whatever you pray, whatever you desire, and it shall be done for you. Now, it doesn't say when it's going to be done, but he says, if you do this, it will be done. And that's where faith comes into play. Now, look at verse eight. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So God wants us in a fruit bearing relationship. He says, and so prove to be my disciples. Now, look at verse nine. Just as the father has loved me, I have also loved you. Wow, that's powerful. Abide in my love. We can rest assured that we can abide in that love. Look at number 10. If you keep my commandments, I'd ask you, how do we show our love to God? Jesus said it like this. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and I abide in his love. And in closing, let me just say this in verse 11. These things I have spoken to you. This is what Jesus is saying that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. That's what Jesus is trying to instill in us. He's trying to give us the confidence and the boldness of relationship because we have this relationship with him, because we understand the relationship that we have with Jesus and that he has with us. When we pray, when we learn to read and study and pray and fellowship, God is saying to us, that you can rest assured and have blessed assurance rather than blessed insurance. And that's what I have for you today in Jesus' name. 